So I'm going to read a few excerpts from the sequence of poems I did for Rauschenberg, 34 illustrations for Dante's Inferno. Um, the title of the sequence is Dante Comes to America, the 20th of January, 2017, an erasure of 17 cantos from Giardi's Inferno after Robin Rauschenberg. Um, I think the most important thing to remember about that long title is that the date was 20 January 2017 um, when uh, Trump was inaugurated to be the president of the United States of America, which was very much on my mind um, in writing these. So this is Canto 25. The snake became my friend. Lake of blood, my talk fell still. I saw my own eyes color together until neither appeared. The edge of heat, the burning page. Discoloration changes to black as white dies from the sheet. Look on, alas, neither two nor one blurred and blended, neither face began or ended. Likeness is modeled to both and neither be still history. Wounded below the eyes, face of the prostrate, forked tongue that has become a beast, talking and spitting, remain crawling along the road as I have done. This project came about in such an interesting way, which is that MoMA asked uh, us, asked me, I said, there's no one better than Robin to do this kind of translation of a translation, which is to say, uh, we have Robert Rauschenberg, who did his 33 drawings for Dante's Inferno, and then we did poems based on those drawings in some way. Um, what I loved about the project is knowing, which I hadn't heard of his drawings, though I was a huge Rauschenberg fan, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that he heard the translation and Chiardi's translation, which is the translation I knew in high school, I first heard it. Um, he heard it every uh, a canto at a time read aloud in a way sort of honoring the oral uh, tradition that Dante was engaged in, you know. Um, and so the, I thought that was so interesting. How do you sort of re-vernacularize this uh, uh, poetry that for me was really transformative? It's when I started thinking myself as a poet, I first came to Dante. And so here it is years later, we, we each uh, have books and have thought about some of these things. And uh, for me, it was a question of trying to get that feeling that Chiardi and Dante and Rauschenberg all mix together, um, yeah. how they kind of speak about, you know, the Inferno, and then also think about, you know, the Inferno all around us, which, um, you know, even seems a long time ago when we could leave our houses and things like that. Um, yes. So, you know, there's a kind of uh, twinness and rereading the poems. I was struck by how much they are in this moment. Uh, yes. and, and, you know, how that works. And I was wondering about your approach, because you did something, uh, you know, brilliant and different than what I did. What did you think when you decided you're going to take this on? Well, I was honored to be asked, of course, because it was you and the great uh, curator, Leah Dickerman, who just keeps hitting home runs out of the park right. year after year for MoMA. Um, and um, all I could think about, I too wasn't aware of the drawings by Rauschenberg, like you, I was a fan, and I didn't know that he had, I didn't know the history of the drawings, I didn't know he had done these drawings, and what really, first of all, uh, of course, as a poet, uh, uh, attracted me was the fact that they, the way that he uh, constructed the work, right, that they were, I mean, he used a big pen to do some of the rubbings to get some of the images. And right. he was just pulling from newspapers. He was pulling from all sorts of media. And it just, it blew my mind that he used Dante's Inferno to um, kind of construct these engagements with his moment. But it didn't surprise me because we've been in hell a long time. And mm -hmm. that's what I really kind of, uh, hooked, speaking of hooks, Dante uh, has hooks a lot throughout the Inferno. I really hooked on to uh, the whole notion that, you know, as far back as the 14th, 13th and, and centuries and going on and before that too, right? Poets have been talking about the hell that is nation, the hell that is empire, the hell that is power. 
Um, and it just so happens, of course, as you know, we were in the middle of uh, the election. We were leading up to the election and life felt particularly hellish. And I did want to back away from that. Mm. And when I looked at uh, Rauschenberg's drawings too, he wasn't backing away. He wasn't backing off. You know, he well, wasn't trying to be comfort. He wasn't trying to comfort anybody. And right. I don't think, and, and Dante certainly wasn't trying to comfort anybody. It was so exciting to see, you know, again, to be reminded of Dante's courage. Yeah. At, at a time where, you know, it, you could get, you could get lost very easily. <laughs> right. Well, he was yeah. sort of exiled and treated bad and got yeah. his revenge. You know, like you don't want to make sure. a point. They'll, they'll put you in your poem forever. That's you know? exactly right. I warn my family all the time, back <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I wonder about that um, quality of the contemporaneous, you know, that I think, you know, yeah. I think of Dante so much as a contemporary of mine, you know? Yes. And uh, that he achieved it by, you know, making myth, uh, making iconography, you know, connecting to religion and, and the afterworld, but also I think by you know, making the sort of conflicts of his time archetypal and emblematic, I think was really, yes. uh, it's very yes. inspiring. And Rauschenberg, of course, is including things from the news and the newspaper and the wars and, you know, like he's trying to understand yes. his moment, but it also feels deeply personal um, mm -hmm. in a way that I think is interesting. And Dante, of course, uh, makes this double, this self that is the self but isn't, um, that I think all poets are, are sort of wrestling with always, um, mm -hmm. makes himself a character. Um, and as a character, he's also slightly different, I think, even than, you know, in Vita Nuova or, or other aspects of Dante. So I guess, uh, you know, for me, like, how do you write that way uh, it came for me, you know, like, how do I create this I as well, who is me, but not me? Um, you know, it's in hell, so it's, you get a lot of permission, but also you, you got to step lightly, you know, uh, as Dante does. So I Kevin, think- I think it's extraordinary. You just said that Dante was your contemporary. <laughs> can you talk, I agree, but can, you know, a lot of people would not think that. Connection, can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I just think of him as so urgent, you know, and I, he's as urgent to me rereading uh, that very cha charity, um, uh, translation what when we did for this project as when I was I think you know 15 or something yeah. which I, I wrote a little introduction kind of thing for the MoMA publication um, about like what it meant to read um, Dante as a teenager when you already feel like you're going through hell anyway exactly. you're like you know no one gets me you know I'm, I'm, I'm all <laughs> alone you know yeah. um, and of course reading Dante you feel this sort of companion I mean he becomes your kind of Virgil almost taking you yes. through this feeling he he becomes yes. for us and it was a brilliant move i mean just purely poetically to say i'm going to put my hero into my poem uh as my guide you know yes. Uh, yes. and i felt like dante is still sort of our guide in some ways how do we na navigate uh and the moments of him being overwhelmed uh and him being lost uh him sort of dante being just shocked and, and, and kind of heartbroken and then sort of being told you can't be sad about this punishment yes. that was just, yes. you know, like there's all these emotions. And I think that's mm -hmm. what I think is uh, powerful about him is that he is emotionally uh, very present uh, in poems that, you know, could easily just be uh, gory or, uh, you know, kind of phantasmagoric, you know, he, he instead is like, invested in the feeling it gives him. And the, yes. similarly, what in, in uh, I went ahead and read the others again, and you know, reading Purgatorio, for instance, I, you're just struck by his kind of uh, lostness, but also the way that he is constantly shocked by what the dead are experiencing or the, the souls yes. experiencing, how, how many they are, there are, he, he often yes. refers to. And so, um, I don't know, there's something about that that makes me feel like it's very of the moment and about witnessing and about seeing what's happening and saying it kind of plain, but even like embellished and, and uh, cathartically and, and full of horror and terror. Um, that's what you got to do. Yes, absolutely. And beautifully and exquisitely too. Right. Like I, I will talk about, but in the vernacular, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to yeah. say, say it not in some fancy... Yes. But in your tongue. 
Um, after that, I can't read because I can't compete with the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and also, and also, I feel like I, I pick up Dante privately at hard times in my life as well, just to remind me, you know, but yeah. also it's like, and here we all are here in hell together. Should I read the first one? Maybe. I'll yes, read please. The first couple. Yes, please. I'll read. I'll read three. How's that? Sure. And then you can read. They're short. One, the dark wood. In my living room, the skull of the coyote discusses with me our pending appointment with bone, the canine teeth of time. The middle of my life, his grin is not found in the smaller antlers of the antelope once found by my father that also flowers from the wall. Down in the square, trees bare as bones their crown of leaves shorn, the hounds of the constables hollering, the lure of light and gas burning in lanterns, guns, my feet deep in the mud of what is called wood or gardens, the government built just for us, your mama's leopard clutch rustling with peppermints, a one-eyed cat, a wolf in silhouette, that whistle, the coyote in the quiet. The hour of our hunger is his only longer. <laughs> to the descent. What will become of us? The blue wash and the arrows aiming us on. No exit, no trespasses, no breath. Are you willing and able to assist Asked the captain, dry docked and airlocked the cruel capsule we barely glimpse earth from. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot move till everyone is seated. We hold each other awaiting the splash of landing. Prepare for impact, our vessels crash and flush, sounding down in the blue. The lake of my heart, the light departing, all around us, new in the briar of after, a lone goose or loon low overhead, the white ring around their necks. What was next? Arms raised to reach the banking birds, hands up, don't shoot, or as if we might ourselves take flight. And this is three vestibule. City of woe. Babylon was busy, frisked and let through. We stepped into death's waiting room. The magazines old as your mama's, time or life with the address ripped off for safety. Ebony, the doctor will see you now, will bill you, will kneel on your chest to stop the bullet or breath. Jet, sweet. Spirit, each body only what will not be, each room an emergency none yet can see. Those are a few of them. Um, I don't know what to say to you right now. <laughs> it's amazing to go back. I, I've been rereading the whole book again oh. uh, in the past two weeks at preparing for this. And it's amazing to go back and read them just now. So you guys were going to geek out for a minute. Excuse me. Kevin always geek out. So I have to geek out okay. on you using time and life, the, the titles of those magazines as both the titles of those magazines, but also, you know, time and life. There's such an incredible conceit in those two lines. It just really struck me. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to say that I didn't say before is just uh, to the audience members, I don't know if you all are aware, but we ended up doing a live concert of these homes. Right. And it was uh, an extraordinary event with a small orchestra, uh, an opera singer. Um, and I'll try to, I will get you guys the link. You really, that, that for me, it made me kind of forget about the book, not literally. <laughs> But the performance blew me out of my, mm. it, it, it did something for me aesthetically. Sure. Um, and Kevin read my poems and I read his mostly. And it was just an extraordinary evening. So I hope you guys have a chance to see that. Kevin, thank you for reading those poems. 
Thank you. Um, I'll read a few. This is Canto 15, The Violent Against Nature. This stone margin now, this shade flaming, constant threat of deluge, the shores drown in spring's torment, the plan not so wide nor high. Who designed this crossing so far from the woods? The dark road pointing us toward the needle's eye. Both sides hunger, but can never reach the grass. We were all clerks of the one single crime. Defiled earth, if any longer, run. Excuse me, I'm using the book. Canto 28, The Sowers of Discord. Subtitle, who could describe in words set free the blood and wounds that now were shown to me. Grief, deep languages, vocabulary of pain, fateful soil running the blood long war. Spoil of golden rings, one without weapons, the mutilation opened wide, red guts, the heart, the lungs, gall batter, shriveled, sachet, mangled, and split. Misery cannot speak. A wretch with a bloody stump in his throat in place of a tongue. And then I'll read one more. I mean, for me, looking at these poems again, uh, I just want to say again that that year, 2016, was a year of the kind of, we, I thought it was a year of terror, but I realized now it was a prelude to <laughs> the terror to come. And that's what's strange about reading these poems again, Kevin, is, right, speaking of the contemporary, right, it was in the air. It was in the air. And we knew it, I think. Um, so I tried to put it into the poems. Uh, this is Canto 16 the violent against nature and art. Hear the rumbling breaking towards us from a company that wants to torture the rain. The ancient wall turning backward to the misery of this place. War, the first impulse of grief. Choked speech, this pit men approach with rehearsed honor, led by the gall of glory over weaned. The heaven of stars speak of breaking. Their amen pronounced bound, have it all coiled and wound. Out from the edge, a long bottomless darkness. Intense arms spread upward, feet drawn close. Thank you, dear. So honored to be this, this project. I, I, I didn't remember how much this project was in my psyche. I don't remember. <laughs> because it was so intense, you know, like time just goes wall wall. Yeah. I don't remember, but I remember being wholly taken by the project <laughs> and completely blown away um, well, by yeah. Rauschenberg and Dante's engagement through time. Well, sorry. No, no, no. I'm sorry to interrupt. I mean, I was struck by how visceral in the original sense your poems are. They're so bodily and torn and and you know about this uh i think the embodiment of the kind of discord you're talking about i was struck by how much um they were dealing with for me you know um loss and imagining you know mm -hmm. deaths at the hands of whomever uh including the police or village vigilantes or you know that was something that came through in my poem i mean it's there in dante and exactly you know even lovers end up in hell he he, he reminds us um <laughs> you know this uh this poem there's two <laughs> there's two poems of mine that maybe uh think about that the first um uh I also, it just was thinking about 
what it meant to be in this room, what, what limbo is, you know, and limbo obviously is one of these things that uh, fascinates uh, and it's a strange kind of negotiation with what do we do with people who are innocent, who die without being baptized, for instance. Yes. Uh, and, and Seamus Heaney, my old teacher, has this beautiful poem and is one of the great translators uh, he, of Dante. He didn't do the whole thing. And I remember asking him, um, it, I, it's crazy that I did. I was just like, why didn't you do the whole thing? <laughs> and he was just sort of like, well, you know, like I didn't have 10 years to give to uh, this translation. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I sometimes think, well, what if he had? And then sometimes I think, thank go goodness, because then when he was able to like do a translation, it just had such power. And he has that beautiful, I'm not going to recall which book, at the end of it, clearly he's lost his father. And so he uh, includes like a, a canto in there that is so beautiful. And it's just without comment, he doesn't say, you know, this is by the way. And that's what I think I love about Kini, but also I think about Dante is he's, Dante's pretty explicit and way, but he allows us to not be. And that's what I think mm -hmm. your poems are so uh, elliptical in this powerful way. Like they're, they're, alighted and and they've reached us from this place that had to be transformed uh through horror you know and um i i'm struck by how both of our poems feel like they have that pressure on them uh in the line i want to have tercets just because of dante's and i love tercets anyway i'm a bit of a tercet addict um and i'm sure it has to do with reading the cantos at some Place. But these two poems are uh, thinking about that moment, and one thinks about uh, uh, lovers, I suppose, and, and, and the carnal, and the other one thinks about this idea of limbo and, and losing a child. Four, limbo, circle one. Skeleton still, we stood. Those before us who once almost believed arrayed like statues, trophies of the child killed we couldn't bear to dust or box away. The dark threshold to the lost teen's bedroom, jersey now empty, baseball team down a man, out with an injury, wild pitch, past ball, technical knockout, technical foul, flagrant two, the flagration of the car turned over, he lay dead beside a good while, dark dye seeping into the street, no pop flies, no catch, player to be named later, no sheet will provide, just the blue tail fly, door nailed, hungry, fit to die. Uh, and this is uh, Latin, uh, no le mie tegere, don't, do not touch me, which is what, um, as you know, Jesus said uh, upon the re resurrection, he was uh, not to be touched. Circle two, the carnal. The dead want us to want them. Lovers of what isn't there, or is that us? leaning close, infidels of the world's invisible, unliving long train. The dead wedded to this world, a vow beneath a veil. In the mirror, we meet the dead each morning, shaving, say. We rake our faces of yesterday or darken our eyes in order to leave out the house. When we smile, the dead nod back. When we laugh, the dead don't seem to mind. Tonight, the lost rise with the moon above the mountain, a stone rolled back from the tomb, the body stolen of its soul, the blind world or whirlwind in daylight. See it, list in the sky sometimes, the moon, ghostly eye, great unremembered rock, bare mirror where we cannot breathe. Lord have mercy. Just a little. It's a little. really hard to listen to you because I'm such a fan. It's really hard to be in, in conversation with you. Oh no. The I, dead want us to want them. 
I, that's one of my favorite poems. I was reading you. I remember when we were on stage, you read that on stage and it was profound when we did the event at MoMA. Um, well, Kevin. I was just working and work, trying to get right. And, you know, some part of it was in my head before. I mean, and that's what I think uh, happened for me, at least during this time, is there were poems I was trying to think about and thinking about Dante or thinking about Rashim or thinking about Dante helped me get there. Keep saying what you're going to say. I want to make. I want to make sure. It would have happened uh, otherwise, you know. Like it, it was like the pressure of the time and the project, and knowing that Robin Cost Lewis is is like right behind me, about to kill me with some poems. I better Shut get. Up. It. <laughs> I better get to writing, you know, with my typewriter. Like you know, just just make it happen. You're very very kind, Kevin. Thank sure. you. But I want to say what I was thinking of. I want to talk about tercets and aesthetic and uh, tercets and Dante and your tercets in, in a minute. But what I was going to say is about that last poem, but all the poems that you wrote in this collection is it, you, they are completely like accepting the pressure of the historical moment between Dante and Rauschenberg and you. Like there's an incredible um, surrender, but also surrender with power. Like that takes a lot of surrender, but a surrender that, you know, in the French sense of surrender, the giving back, right? It's just this incredible, um, difficult thing to do aesthetically as an artist of any kind. And Rauschenberg in these drawings did it so well, right? And then it seems like you and, and Dante, you and Dante hanging out in the corner. Like, you and Dante were like this on a park bitch yeah. talking. But it de but the poem does feel that way. That's what's incredible to me that, you know, and I think it circles back to your uh, conversation uh, or your comment about the Dante being contemporary, which I think is really smart. Um, and so tercets. So I wanna to talk to you about tercets because I've been, I started writing tercets recently Partly because, by the way, Kevin Young has a new book out that I'm waiting to arrive. Uh, uh, yeah. Profound, yeah. profound. Congratulations. Thanks. I can't wait. Um, and I've noticed, and I've been talking to my students about your use of your your habit of tercets. <laughs> <laughs> your... I don't mean to call it a habit. It's... <laughs> But 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 as a teaching tool pedagogically, <clears throat> I asked them. We did a whole class on just tercets to show what work tercets can do. Yeah. Right. Uh, for a poem. And it was really enlightening. And so I wonder if you could talk about Tertzins and also what you noticed in Dante's Tertzins. What? You, I couldn't hear you. Share with me what you learned, because I don't know. I have no idea. Um, no, I, I think for me, you know, they changed. I think I first really started writing. I, you know, I'm sure I did them in poems. But when I did the Basquiat book, To Repel Ghosts, uh, I really wanted that kind of canto feel to them. Mm -hmm. And Tertzins, as you know, uh, Dante also is in Terza Rima. And, that way that the poems are all interlocking. And, you know, it's a kind of uh, statement about, you know, forever or, or perpetuity or heaven or uh, certainly about language. And so I wanted some version of that. And I wasn't mm -hmm. sure, you know, Bas Bascat was kind of my guide um, in that book. Um, he, he showed me to history and humor, um, you know, humor that was already there, both in history and in sort of the crazy pop culture we consumed. Uh, and I, I found an ally in, but I didn't know you could make art out of that fully. Yes. I think I thought yeah. art had to be fancy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so he was really freeing. And so for me to returning to them, uh, it feels slightly different. It feels more um, like a bit of how I hear the language stepping through uh, language. I think it has more to do maybe with, uh, these clash of vernaculars that you know also were in my earlier poems, but um, I see them a lot in here, just especially because I haven't uh, looked at them in a while, and I actually pulled them back out uh, a year ago, right when the pandemic was around us, and they really were. It was weird because it was hard to write, and um, looking at these, excuse me, um, poems that Dante, you know, I started thinking about plague and. Uh, you know, they, they made a different kind of sense. I think I, in a weird way, they were almost too uh, stark and dark for me. Um, and then to be able to revisit them, they felt like daily life, um, which I think is some of what is powerful in Dante himself. You know, you see the way that, uh, you know, 
hell can be daily life it can be all around us you know i was in new york and in harlem and people were dying and ambulances were were, were you know going by and you know how do you catch that sound and capture that or rather how do you not you know mm -hmm. um and i think that's what i uh permission he gave me to to think about and tercets mm -hmm. are kind of that container that you know they have a beginning middle and end uh, but not necessarily mm -hmm. in that order to paraphrase uh, Godard, um, you know, and, and there's a kind of way in which, especially in that kind of rolling quality that Dante had, um, I, I feel like they, they uh, kind of connect and there's something about it's, it's a different kind of regularness than a quatrain, which is very like, you don't even notice, you know, the quatrain is just kind of like, you know, what, what I heard Seamus uh, once say in a workshop was like, a good stanza driver, you know, in, in quatrain, you're just like 10 and 2 uh, on the wheel, like, <laughs> quatrains, and I say that as someone who loves quatrains, you know, yes, I yes. want something a little bit off, you know, uh, a turf set helps, and then sometimes I love a, a couplet too, because it, it does something quite different, but um you know it feels like you're just getting going and then you're in the next one uh a tercet and, and there's something about that 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 unevenness that oddness as it were that really yeah. worked yeah i also thinking about just triangulation <laughs> and yeah. triangles and the the trinity and yeah. all of those things happening um at the same time it's really incredible to keep reading the text over and over and over again, right? To come back to it. Of course. What'd you say? You broke up a little. Changes, of course. And yeah, you know, yeah. One changes, yeah. it changes, or it stays yeah. the same. You change. I don't know which is it. Yeah. I want to hear some more uh, from you about uh, the oh, poems. More poems. I want to hear. Oh, read another poem. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can find one. Okay. Canto 17. Um, it has an epigraph from Dante. Now see the sharp-tailed beast that mounts the brink. These words signal the sheer end of our rocky prototype. Fraud settles his head upon the edge of a dark innocence under his body. Features and expressions, half reptile, paws, knots, circlets, tapestry of flowering void. A fight is on, the rim bound, burning. Monster crouching on the ledge, smoking hands, blood wider than sorrow. Pursed, twisted tongue, licking its rump, undaunted. Backward, backward, the sky a great scar. Leaned out and stared into hell. Well, and I, you know, I was struck uh, rereading it um, and reading the other parts about his insistence, Dante, on ending with the stars. Um, yeah, yeah. And so I actually thought to end, I would read a poem that does end with stars, though it's not in that uh, initial setting. It's what I've sort of thought of as kind of the end of maybe some kind of afterlife or heaven or something like that. And it's Please. about that. Um, Please. But I love that that Dante, that's hard to do, man, to make your poem <laughs> land at the same thing. And even just me trying to think about my own, what would my own purgatorio look like? It's hard to get to stars in purgatory, you know? It and is very hard. In a weird way, like, like we were saying, this past year has been very, you know, limbo, purgatory, all those things. You know, when I, I made a bunch of uh, quarantine mixes just to keep myself sane, and the first song on the first one is, is Sitting Here in Limbo by Jimmy Cliff, you know? I can't, I can't get off that line, the dead want us to want them. I just can't, those lines, I can't let go of it. Um, it feels such like such dark commentary on everything on life, diaspora, on Dante, on, 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 on quarantine, right? That we keep hitting these inconceivable numbers of people leaving yeah. and, and yet, you know, so I, I just wanna just pause on the um, sheer brilliance and poignancy of that line and the, and the, and the, um, the heft. Well, no, I, I appreciate it so much. Uh, for me, 
you know, the dead became kind of a character uh, as they are in Dante. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. how do you write about that? You know, how mm -hmm. do you, how do you, they become a, a force and um, a, 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 a people. And, you know, we've mm -hmm. all in different ways uh, been touched by that in the past year of pandemic and the pandemics of racism and mm -hmm. uh, just we're we're in a moment where i think we're trying to contend with it and you know uh grief as you know is one of those things that doesn't just stop you know it, it it's i say in another poem in the book that's coming out uh stones is i say you know grief is evergreen there's this way in which it just keeps happening right um yeah. but it kind of changes and 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 um if you tend it right, which sounds strange, um, it, it can have a different flowering or a different moment. Um, and, uh, you know, I think about that a lot. And so, uh, well, that's but, what I love about the Don, Dante, right? That he didn't ignore hell, mm -hmm. right? So many, so many writers ignore hell. <laughs> so many artists ignore hell. It's like, how can you? You're standing in it or it's right there, right? But then he went on. Right. And grief is very much one of your subjects in all your work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, all of them, you also edited a, a, an anthology about poems about grief, but it's in everywhere. And it's all, but that's what I, that's one of the things I appreciate about you and other poets who refuse to look away. Well, I think the thing that I love that you're doing in this poem and, and your other long poems is you're able to engage history as this living thing that you also feel, um, it seems to me, totally comfortable taking for your own. You know, you don't mm -hmm. have any shyness about preserving it or keeping it over here or as this perfect ideal, but instead you're in it and mixing it up and remixing it and providing it to us in ways that I think Dante does too. He, you know, he has uh, different eras sitting alongside each other. He has- yes contemporaries yes. in hell gnawing on each other's necks you know <laughs> as they did as they did in life I'm sure <laughs> I think for me I was always fascinated by you know is it worse to get eaten face first or eaten like you know legs first you know that's what he's trying to figure out when he's trying to yeah. paint the the horrors of hell but also in the end I guess you know I was and I wanted to leave us uh in some way with some other tone, but because I think there is that other tone in Dante. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is uh, a poem called Rapture. So this is a poem called Rapture. I want to be awake when the world ends. I want to be my friend who rose to an empty house, even his grandmother and her worn cross gone and thought it was the rapture that he hadn't crossed over. Let me rip my shirt as he did and tear into the street, hollering. Let me hear only my blood beat this morning among the rain before the dawn, no one on the line. Later, when they return, let those I love who left have only gone to the store, running errands, this errant, unebbing, life after let what i've torn the myself i mourn be mended and start over like a scar or star <laughs> <laughs>